Wait, wait. Oh my goodness. Ah! <laughs> that is so big. If there's a fish that swims, I need to catch it. Fresh water, salt water, from a boat, from a kayak, or from four inches of ice. I thrive off the new experiences fishing gives me. I'm an ex-fishing guide turned videographer calling Lake of the Woods, Ontario my home. I'm Jay Siemens, and this is The Canadian Angle. Earlier this spring, I thought it'd be a cool idea to get dropped off on an overnight adventure on a backcountry lake in the Canadian Shield that I knew nothing about. Thanks to my pilot buddy Hayden, we were able to make this dream a reality. Ooh. Prime time, sun setting. This is when things happen. It is a stunning, stunning day in the Canadian Shield. Perfect morning for flying. I'm not flying this morning. Got my buddy Hayden Martin. Behind the wheel? Is that the term? The wheel or the the you call it a the, stick. The flaps, the stick, okay. <laughs> What's the game plan? We're gonna fit all this in here? Way less stuff than I was expecting really? for my pal Jay to bring out. I normally overpack all the time. <laughs> Hayden flew me in ice fishing this winter and I brought way too much gear, so I tried to pack as light as possible the essentials. I really didn't bring food. Um, I have a couple safety items, but essentially we're planning on, I'm planning on hopefully eating some walleye. So there's a lot of pressure to catch fish, but uh, time's wasting. We've got a perfect morning and we've got to load some gear. As an angler, I love the places fishing brings me. Nothing brings me more excitement than trying to figure out the puzzle of a new lake. I knew this lake I was getting dropped off at, had walleye northern pike, but that's all I knew, and I could not wait to figure it out. There goes Hayden. Oh, huge shout out to Hayden. Thank you for helping me out in this adventure. We are now in the middle of nowhere. It's safe to say we have the lake to ourselves. Hayden is working on his commercial license, he has his private license, and uh, soon he will be doing this for a living and he's, he's very talented at it. So uh, it, it, it inspires me to maybe get my pilot's license one day, but we're now at the lake, which we shall name Lake Hayden forever and ever. And uh, he says there's a boat for me to use back here. I wanna go fishing. We're gonna bring the battery and the trolling motor over we're gonna go see what we're dealing with for a boat. There she is. Hayden says it doesn't leak. I'm gonna take his word for it. This looks like uh, looks like DOS boat season three right there. We'll have to make a couple modifications, but I think it's perfect for one person. Two people might be might be a little questionable, but it's got a decent transom to put the trolling motor on and the electronics and. The nice flat bottom, I can actually set a tripod in the front to film, so this is gonna be, this is gonna be deadly. Look at that. This is a 55 pound thrust, so this is the biggest you can get on a 12 volt system. All right, step one complete. Gotta power this bad boy. A nice seat that Hayden made for me. And the old bailing bucket. It floats. Yeah. All right guys, we're just about to head out. Uh, I'm gonna go over the gear I brought because a common question I get are, you know, what are some essential lures if you can only bring one tackle box, if you can only bring one rod? Well, I, I brought three rods. But right now I'm gonna tell you the three essentials that I would bring if I was on a deserted island, which I kind of am. And uh, yeah, these are three options that I can kind of do everything with on this lake. We got two geared towards walleye and one gear towards pike. So first off, on the lightest end of the spectrum, we have a seven and a half foot medium light. You can jig with this, you can use a bobber and a leech. In this scenario, I got a drop shot rigged up and what a drop shot is, it's got a little wide gap or octopus hook high up and then it's got a leader and then it's got a weight at the bottom. So what that does is that weight sits on the bottom. You can keep it on a you know somewhat taut line or even on a slack line. And with your rod tip, when you go slack and tight, that lure up top bounces. So you could use like a artificial leech, 
minnow type. I'm gonna use like a gulp alive minnow. Uh, you could use a real leech, a real minnow. Great technique because it keeps you out of the weeds, keeps you out of the snags. If you do get snagged, you often just lose the weight and not the entire rig. And um, yeah, just a way that I like to finesse fish for walleyes. Now on the more aggressive side of things, we've got a swim bait, three and a half inch swim bait. And I think this is a quarter ounce or three eighth ounce head. Um, seven and a half foot rod, this is a medium, so slightly heavier. Um, you could fish blade baits with this as well. Yeah, this is, this is for the more aggressive baits, rattle baits, blade baits, swim baits. This is what's gonna cover water and probably what I'm gonna be using first to just try to get on some fish and find them. The bait is a lot of thump. And uh, you know, if the fish are aggressive at all, they are gonna chow this. And hopefully this is how you can catch most of the walleyes. All right, we got our third and final rod. This is an eight foot medium heavy. This is our, our pike stick. This is something a little heavier with a bait caster reel. We got 40 pound braid on it. And we're using a bucktail, a spinner. This is just a single treble on the back. And the reason I like this is obviously it's a good bait for catching fish, but it's easy to unhook, unhook fish. If I'm in the middle of nowhere, I don't want to be dealing with a bunch of treble hooks. I want to be dealing with, you know, single jigs, single octopus hooks, or just a treble hook for the pike because I didn't bring a net along. I've got some long pliers, I've got some bolt cutters, but the easier I can make it on myself, um, the less chance of getting to a situation when I'm by myself. But I think that's pretty much it. I think we're gonna get in the boat, get the sonar rigged up and hopefully catch some dinner because otherwise it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> All right, welcome aboard the SSJ. The first goal is to catch walleye for sustenance, for food, and then maybe we'll go chase a big pike. But we're gonna hook up this little graph I brought along just so we know depth and maybe see some fish. Electronics is just so important for finding fish. Um, on a small lake like this, I mean, you can just visually see some of the features you might wanna fish. For walleyes, I mean, rocky points are really good. They can be in weeds definitely in this, all summer, but definitely in the springtime, they can favor weeds or mud bays. But probably like one of the biggest factors in the spring, especially on a really small lake, is where is the wind blowing? So the wind's been pounding into the shore for I think a couple days now. So we're gonna focus on this end of the lake, where the wind's blowing. We're gonna set up our transducer first. And this is a handy little thing if you ever do fly-in type trips. This is just a um, portable transducer bracket. So you can get a suction cup mount or you can get these bars that just uh, crank onto your transom of your boat. So that's what we're gonna be using. It'll give us water temperature. It'll potentially mark fish if the fish are out deeper. All right, we're gonna start right in front of our camp. Looks like a nice spawning bay here. Um, a lot of shallow, weedy, I'm, I'm assuming it's weedy back here in the base. Not much for a rock face, so we're gonna kind of just drift. I mean, we do have an anchor if we get onto fish, but for now we're kind of just gonna drift some shoreline, cast to the swim bait, cover water, and uh, yeah, like I said, I'm focusing on the areas that the wind's been blowing, pushing the bait fish, pushing the whole food chain up onto those spots. So these fish will be done spawning already, and hopefully, they're gonna be hungry. Oh, first fish. What do we got? Oh, that fish was aggressive. He ate right beside the boat. We got a walleye. That did not take long on the swim bait. That was so cool. That was probably like three or four casts in. I could have sworn it was a pike by how aggressively he came and chased beside the boat. Part of me wants to release this, release this fish. Part of me wants to keep it for dinner. Ah, it's such a tough call. I'm gonna regret it, so I gotta keep this first fish. Otherwise, I may not have food today. So this guy is a perfect eater, probably a 14, 15 incher, and he is, he's gonna be, he's gonna be real good later today. We're in six feet of water right now, kind of on the ledge of this rock. So basically how I'm working it, this swim bait is I'm keeping the rod tip high and then reeling a couple feet, letting it hit the bottom. So it's swimming, hitting the mud, swimming, hitting the mud. And so often when it hits the mud and then lifts up, there's a walleye just waiting to pounce on it. So I'm hoping that happens again. There we go. Oh, we got species number two in this lake, the Northern Pike. Nothing wrong with eating a pike, but today, Walleye's on the menu. There we go. Ooh, that's a nice walleye. Ooh, they're getting bigger. <laughs> that is beautiful. Canadian gold right there. You don't need live bait, look at that. All right, we do not need to keep one this big. Come on. I think this lake is polluted. <laughs> Just letting it tap bottom. 
Okay. Well, this one's a little bit smaller. <laughs> but this lake is healthy. That's probably what they're feeding on. These small yellow perch. These guys fill a lot of the shield lakes here. Oh, wow. That was right into the boat. <laughs> and this is some of the fastest walleye fishing I've ever had. Maybe I don't have to be worried about keeping that second one right away. I remember when I got into fishing, when I was 16, 17, just got my drivers, and I had a 12 foot aluminum boat that fit in the back of the truck with this same electric motor. And the trips we went on and the big lakes we fished, and I know it's, you know, everyone dreams of getting that big 20 foot windshield or tiller with a 200 on the back, but the memories I have in a little boat like this, you should never let gear hold you back from a good adventure. Oh, wow. That was fun. This is so fun, guys. Look at this average size. Unbelievable. All right, spot number one. That was a success. We got dinner, got to set some hooks. They're shallow, which is good. We're gonna do some safari now, some looking around. I got the graph dialed in. So yeah, I'm basically, there's a couple key spots like rocky points, windblown shorelines with some weeds. That's kind of what I caught them on. And then, I mean, this lake has like one or two islands. So we'll check around the islands as well. But uh, yeah, right off the start, this lake is a little deeper than I thought. It's 25 feet here. See what we can find. There's a term that if you're a walleye fisherman, you've heard it many, many times, it's called walleye chop. And it's just any sort of breeze. I would say this is a walleye chop right now, but when it is a glass calm, flat, sunny day, walleye can be just so fickle, so tough to catch. You know, you have to use like the most delicate presentation right in front of their face. Any sort of wind, just it, it breaks up the light. It makes them tougher to see you and just they're a little more comfortable feeding. Like walleyes, when you, when you see their eyes illuminate the right way, like they're night feeders. They do a lot of their feeding in low light periods and they just, yeah, feel more comfortable that way. So middle of the day, flat and calm, definitely not ideal. This little breeze we have right here, a little bit of cloud cover. I mean, it's all in our favor. I think my bait got tangled or pulled down. Oh my goodness. There's weeds on my bait. Sure enough, then a pike comes out. Just to show you what we're dealing with. Can you see that? The hook's not even in his mouth. He's not even hooked. He's just biting down on it. Look at that. <laughs> got some weeds, got some boulders, and I think we got a pike. And I am wrong, that's just a very aggressive walleye. Look at that. You don't need live bait. These long pliers are super handy, especially when you end up dealing with a big toothy pike. Another one. Ooh. Not too many boats out today. It's kind of quiet. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Hayden, for dropping me off in paradise. Oh, every cast I'm getting a bite. Oh. Be free. Biggest pike of the day so far. Nothing too special. Hopefully we get bigger, but still a lot of fun. So yeah, this is our best spot by far. We've got eight feet all the way into shore here, eight, eight to six, like a real shallow, a big sand flat. I mean, the beach on the shore gave it away. And typically, weeds grow on sandy beaches. As I mentioned, on a flat sunny day in June, July, walleyes love weeds. And this is proof of it. Just littered. It has been a crazy, crazy morning. No shortage of fish. Um, we got one to cook up yet. I think we're gonna head back to camp, set up the tent, get things ready. Uh, I would say normally this would be the midday lull, so that's why we're doing it, but it doesn't seem like there's any lull. So anyways, 
we're gonna rip back to camp, get things ready, get things organized, and then uh, we'll probably come back out, maybe try to figure out some bigger walleyes, but probably also throw some bigger baits for some pike, but if we didn't catch another fish, it's been an absolute success. And uh, now we're back, we're gonna, I think, set up camp. We've got a decent amount of uh, real estate around here. Not too many campers to compete with. So I think we're gonna do our cooking out on the rock near the point. I don't like building fires too far or too close to the bush. I mean, a couple of reasons. Close to the bush, there's just more chance of that fire spreading. And secondly, the closer you build your fire to the water, the easier it is to put it out and to drench it. And, and also I don't like cooking on beaches, so cooking on solid rock is definitely a bonus as well. So we're gonna build that fire as close to the water's edge as possible. And then when we're done, it'll be really easy to uh, put it out because starting a forest fire isn't a good thing typically. So anyways, we gotta do some unpacking, set up the tent, and then I think we're gonna build a fire and uh, cook some walleye. All right, this is where I'm setting up the tent. A little bit of moss, a couple of trees. If it does rain, it'll help shelter things a bit, but the biggest thing I wanna be is near the lake so I get some good airflow. There's bugs and stuff, and if it's a hot night. Full disclosure, I've never set up this tent before. Thermarest, pillow, we're golden. All right guys, camp is all good. I think that's gonna be uh, a great place to spend the night, as long as no bears come around. But I, I really didn't bring much for food along, so I don't think that'll be an issue. But decided not to cook now. We're gonna save that for later. We'll probably catch one more walleye and do a feast later tonight. But we got big pike to catch. So we're gonna get back on the water, try for pike. And if we're not successful, we're gonna head back and lay another beat down on the walleyes. But uh, I'm told there's some big pike in this lake, so I'm feeling good. If you're gonna target big pike, you need proper release tools. Yes, a big net or cradle would be good. Uh, I have a fair amount of experience hand landing pike. It is still something you need to be very careful with, but bolt cutters to cut the hooks in case things get crazy and it's hooked in a bad spot, and some long pliers, maybe even two pairs of long pliers. I have these, these other hook outs as well. Sometimes you need to pry them open with these, get the hook with that. But you just wanna be prepared because we're not fishing for numbers anymore. We're fishing for a 40 plus inch pike. You know, so that's that's an old fish and that's a resource you need to take care of. So if we catch a big pike, we're absolutely releasing it and using the proper gear, right? We could land it on our walleye gear on 10 pound line, but you might fight that fish out. He might get very stressed in the warm water and end up dying. Just because they're released doesn't mean they survive. So anyways, I'm just gonna put us on a slow forward movement. We're gonna start chucking a winding with this big, big spinner, bucktail. So with a bucktail, there's no pausing and letting it fall. There's just winding. Pike feel this, that vibration of the water off those blades, it drives them crazy. Muskies as well. Pike have a tendency to follow, so that's why I'm trying to stand when I pike fish, so I can see those follows, maybe speed up the lure and try to trigger that fish. With a walleye, they don't, they don't really follow as much. You kind of either catch them or you don't. Both pike, sometimes some of the most ferocious bites you'll get is right beside the boat. They'll follow it and they'll eat it with a couple feet of line off the tip of your rod, which is like the best part of pike fishing. So it's so important to keep your lure in the water as long as possible and just to stay focused on what's going on because it can happen very fast. There we go. Oh, that's a little bit better. It was way out there. Oh, there we go. There you go. Basically with a bucktail, you've got these two blades and when they start spinning, it creates a vortex. And that tinsel just explodes underwater and dances and undulates and pulses and it just drives fish crazy. And like I said, they feel it. Oh, baby. That was sweet. I think he used all his energy right away. So, no, never mind. That was cool. That is why pike are so much fun right there. They just don't care about the boat. Pretty little guy. All that fish is under the boat. I can see him. Oh! 
<laughs> that was insane. Are you done? Oh, that was a cool strike. I knew he was sitting under the boat and just jigged off the back. I'd saw him on the graph. Beautiful. That was fun. All right, guys. That is it for pike fishing this afternoon. It is almost dinner time since we skipped lunch, but I want one more walleye to eat because I think one is not gonna be enough for me right now. So hopefully this weed bed still has a couple walleyes left. We'll see. One more walleye for dinner. That was perfect timing. All right, that is exactly what we needed. Those two walleye are gonna turn into blackened chipotle walleye. Something I've never actually made before. I always like switching it up, trying new things, and uh, you know, doing the deep fried fish all the time is, it's, you can't go wrong with the deep fried, but sometimes it's nice to do something different. We got dinner. All right guys, so we were switching it up from the original deep fried walleye, which so many people are used to, and I love myself, but we're gonna do some blackened walleye with some chipotle spice, and uh, it's, it's pretty easy. You just melt some butter, pan fry it, sprinkle some seasoning on top, and I like to cook it till it's a little bit black on the edges, those little gritty bits, but uh, yeah, this should be pretty straightforward. You can check it with a fork, but this all flake apart pretty easily right now. That's all very cooked. Well, you got your blackened chipotle walleye. About as fresh as it gets. Try not to put this down on my lap and burn myself. But it's just so easy to make. I mean, a little bit of butter and a bottle of spices. Nice thing about this meal as well, so you don't need to get, the pan is hot, you don't need to get oil hot, you just need to get that butter, you know, warm enough, but it doesn't need to be cooking like normally if you're deep frying with oil. One more thing that needs special attention, it is such a dry summer up here in Canada, is you gotta put out your fires, put it out till you think it's good, and then put like another five pots or pans of water on it because you don't wanna be responsible for forest fire. Well, it's just a beautiful evening. Had to come out for a little bit more fishing because what else am I gonna do here? That fish was so good. Ooh. Hit it in the fall. It's turning the boat. Nice walleye, one of the nicer ones of the day. There you go. Sun is setting. It looks like some of the bigger fish are eating. So good. Well, the spot we started the day at now got us one of our nicer fish of the day. Just wonder how many fish are in this lake. It's just wild. Ooh. It's like the same cast as the last one. This one feels nice too. It's staying down. Prime time, sun's setting. This is when things happen. What do we got? I gotta loosen the drag a bit. Oh man. Okay, that's the biggest walleye of the day. <laughs> right after the last cast. Unreal, I'm glad I came back out. Come on, baby. Come on. This clear water is so cool to see them fight. Wow, that rattle bait's just gone. That is a nice shield walleye right there. Look how that rattle bait is just absolutely gone down his trap. Guys, and that is why you stick it out right till the end. Because sometimes in that last half hour or hour, the big ones start biting. So good. 
That's probably a 24 inch fish. Amazing, amazing. Well guys, the sun is setting. We're headed back to camp. Like, what a phenomenal day. We caught so many fish, had an amazing fish fry. Um, I just love trying to crack the coat on New Lake. That's why I love fishing New Lakes. It's just like, you know, what are the fish relating to? How are they setting up? And today, windblown and weeds were kind of the key. And, um, you know, we didn't figure out the pike. We did, I think, figure out the walleyes decently, but we got one more morning, tomorrow morning, and hopefully, hopefully, we can find one of the elusive big pike around here. But we are gonna have a good sleep first. Well guys, we got some good news, some bad news. Good news, had a great sleep. Didn't have any bears bother us. Bad news, it's starting to rain and it's dark over there. And that is in the direction of where Hayden is, our pilot. He said it's pouring back at home. so. He's not able to come right now, so we're, we're stranded for the time being. I'm not too worried, but uh, for me, that's gonna mean I think I need to pack everything up and not fish this morning, so when he is able to come, we're ready to go, because I don't wanna be stuck here all week. I mean, I do, I do, but I can't. So anyways, we are gonna pack up. That, unfortunately, is gonna be it for a trip, unless this turns into a multi-day survival ordeal. But uh, yeah, amazing times in paradise. Just one of many gems to explore and it's just crazy. It makes you wonder how many lakes like this uh, maybe never get fished. 